and welcome to my bike review of the Honda Click 160 ABS. Now I'm going to tell you everything that I have learned about this motorbike, the good point and the bad point in my opinion. So I've had it for a few days now and I've taken it out on some rides and both myself and my wife have been on it. So uh, I used to have a Honda Click before, the 125, but now the Honda Click that I had before was nine years old and I decided I needed a change or I wanted to change. The Honda Click that I had for um, nine years was fantastic. I loved it. It was a brilliant bike and it looked as good as new when I sold it because I did take care of it and I looked after it. But now I bought the Honda Click 160. It is a good bike. I love the bike. It's beautiful shaped. I love the shape and it's the pearl, <coughs> pearl white. So not, exact, not exactly glossy white type of thing, but LED lights and big chunky tires on it. So everything is nice about it. And because it's a new shape and a new model, it looks very nice. And as I say, if we go around the other side, you can see it's got ABS on it, which I liked it because of the safety reasons, but I'll go on to that a little bit later on. And because it's got gold wheels, it's got gold click 160 ABS. And I believe that all the ABSs uh, have got gold colored lettering for, there's no graphics on, on the side on the panel. So it's all plain white. But when we got the motorbike delivered, first of all, there was a few scratches on it. So we sent it back. So watch watch the other video with regard to that. There was a scratch down there. There was a little mark on here. So there was about three or four marks altogether. So the wife wasn't very happy with it. So she sent it back to the shop and it got fixed. And then they brought it back the second day. And again, same thing. There was a little scratch still on there. So the guy who delivered got his cream out and buffed it. Now, as I say, the things that we like about it, it's got a a compartment here that you can put your phone in it's got a USB charger but when all said and done if you want to put one of them um, phone holders on here and you plug your USB and you have to have this this open all the time because there's no way out of the cable with it shut so for instance if you've got a waterproof cover type of thing and you've got it plugged in there you're going to let water into there and then on the other side is the main component side thing. And what I don't particularly like about it is that it's, it's a keyless operation. I've never really been a fan of keyless operation, but hey ho, you couldn't get it with a normal key. So as long as that's in your pocket or your bag or whatever, and I think you're within two meters of the motorbike, everything works. So. So I'm going to leave the key for demonstration purposes here, so it's close. So when you when you first start the motorbike, you turn the, the switch to the seat position, and therefore you can open the seat. Then the second part of it is now you can start the engine. So you start the engine on that. And then what a lot of people forget to do when they put the side stand down, the engine sh shuts down, they forget to switch it off, which then drains your battery. And then to lock the motorbike, you just turn the, the handlebars to the 10 o'clock position and switch it over to, to lock. And that now locks your bike. And once you take your key away with you, then you're okay. But what some people do, they leave the key in there so they don't lose the key. But that's, it's, it's just open to theft, you know, so it's more easily stealable I think because a lot of people leave the key either under the seat or in one of these little compartments instead of putting it in your bag. Now we does have a, an alarm system as standard so I turn the alarm on it'll bleep and then a little red light comes on there all the time just to say that the alarm's on then if somebody moves it it sets the alarm off. So that, that's one good advantage of it, which I like about it, is because it's got an alarm system on it. 
but we always had a, a little little lock that we put under the disc brake anyway so okay going on to the things that i don't like about this which i i think it's it's um which i i think is is pretty important for me w when you're driving around with your sunglasses on the head up display isn't really visible it's not it's not really really bright and i think honda have tried to put too many things on the display you've got your petrol gauge which obviously everybody wants and then you've got uh your kilometers which everybody wants and your miles or kilometers an hour which is good but it's not very bright so in sunlight conditions okay the the, the mileage or the kilometers an hour is quite good you can see that but the rest of it it's all very small the clock's very small i'm not bothered about the clock uh total 42 kilometers we've done now on the old-fashioned click it had it on on numbers there so you could see it clearly but also where it's got is a few extra things on here which it tells you how good or bad you're driving with, with regard to miles per gallon or miles per litre and in reality do we need to know that it's a little scooter it's not like a car where you can drive it but i've got to say i've, I've still trying to find out yet on the the manual as to how you can switch the light on because when it's dark this all lights up it's all orange and it's beautiful when it's lit up and you can see it perfectly but during the daylight hours i don't think my personal opinion because i have my sunglasses on as well this isn't well lit but also it's got on here which is good the engine management system so if anything goes you know, low of oil or something like that a little light comes up um this little orange light here is the uh, abs and then engine management system high beam or low beam and you've got your indicators which is good so that's nice and bright as opposed to whereas before it was on here so you might miss it type of thing what would be good if if the if the indicator made a bleeping noise when it was was on then then you'd actually see that it was on um because so many people drive around with their motorbike with the um indicator still switched on so like i say to open the seat you put it to the first one press the seat and this opens up now it's not a big big luggage compartment but it's big enough to put your helmet in and this is how you check because it's it's liquid cooled is this honda so this is where you check to see whether the um you know there's enough water in this and petrol again we like this because it's you know it's underneath the seat so there's no likelihood of spillage on the petrol because one of the things that we didn't like about the uh, Honda lead is petrol fuel cap was there and it was a flimsy little cap and petrol on the complaints a lot of people had that when they took the petrol hose out drips of petrol went down and stained the the footboard now we like this also because of the of the flat deck area although it might be lacking a little bit under there for shopping and things like that but you can get two or three good shopping bags on here no problem and there's a little hook just for safety so for me that's that's good i like that um going on to the braking system braking system before on the old honda click that we had on here you had a, a device that just so you locked your brakes so off you're parked on a little bit of a, an incline or whatever you can lock your brake but on here because the two discs i don't know whether it's because it's two discs or whatever um there's no brake to lock it or if there is let me know because i've looked in all the books and i can't find it at all so them are the things that i don't particularly like with regard to to this but is it is it a deal breaker no no it isn't it's a fantastically beautiful looking bike and the final thing that I've got to say that I don't particularly uh, like the fact that on the 125, if your battery went flat, it had a kickstart. So you could actually kickstart the motorbike and get it going if your battery was flat. Whereas here, there's more likelihood of your battery going flat because a lot of people leave that 
open and once you walk away okay people can't drive it because it needs the key ignition to work but it drains your battery down so the 160 doesn't have a kickstart so if if the battery's flat then then you're stuck really but also there is another key to get emergency access into the seat and it's by by one of them it's a little safety and you have to pull that off and then there's a little little clap clip in there that you just switch it on and that opens your seat to be able to get your tools out and wherever you need to get out so that's my little review on the 160 i love the motorbike i really do even though it's got it's not perfect but it's a beautiful bike and i've driven it and it goes out and it drives very very well and because it's got a little bit bigger engine the 160 as opposed to the 125 it's really really good and like the abs same thing you pull your left brake and that gives a 60 percent on the back and 40 percent on the front then your right hand brake is just the front wheel alone <coughs> now i like it because of the abs because if you had to brake very hard for instance i seen a, an accident the other day and that's what convinced me the day before i bought this motorbike was there's a guy ran in front well the cat ran in front of a truck the truck braked he ran across the road the cat and the motorbike hit it now we braked very hard to miss the cat but his front wheel hit it and uh, so he locked the brakes and he also um hit the cat and he fell off fell off the motorbike and he was quite quite shook up not badly injured but shook up as anybody would be if they fell off a motorbike so abs for me for it was another seven thousand just over seven thousand baht to have the abs and the abs for me works it, it's an added safety bonus for for another seven and a half thousand baht or so so that is the <coughs> honda click 160 if you've got any any questions that i can answer i'll gladly answer any questions that you want um i'm not a motorbike expert but i've got this now and i could tell you the good and the bad and the ugly about it and it's an honest review is it perfect no it isn't perfect but i don't think there is a motorbike that's perfect but i do love the motorbike it drives really really well oh one last thing the 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 kilograms it, it's rated up to 118 kilo and a lot of people have complained about the the spring it's only a single spring now i'm about 100 105 kilos and the wife 55 so by having both of us on here it exceeds what it says at 118 kilo <coughs> now the other click that i had again no modifications to it and me and the wife used to be on there and we had no problems and the same with this both of us have been on here so a combined weight of about 160 kilos and it drives it drives very very well i've got no complaints on it but i might just as a because i'm going to keep this for another 10 years or nine or ten years or so i might upgrade the shock absorber and get a new shock so it'll take like 160 kilos Has anybody else done that upgraded the suspension any good points bad points about it so again leave your comments down below thanks very much for watching until the next video bye for now